This maunga sits in between Ngāpui, Ngāti Hau on the inland side and Te Uriu Hekeheke and Ngāti Wai on the coastal side. In the late 1800s when land was being subdivided and converted from customary guardianship into legal ownership, into legal titles, this was part of a block which had multiple Māori shareholders. My grandfather, Eru Patuone Nehua, was the single largest shareholder. Granny and Grandad were milking cows. As you can see, it's not an easy property to farm. It's pretty steep and rugged. There are lots of rocks. And so farming turned out to be quite a challenging use for the whenua. <laughs> The land block was alienated in 1961. I want to highlight um, the actions and inactions of the Crown resulted in significant loss to Farno. Those hundred shareholders and the hapu and the iwi lost some of their whenua because of rates arrears and the purchaser, European purchaser, uh, who was supposed to pay for those arrears got them waived by the council. The very reason how, or, or, or why, a hundred shareholders lost their whenua. In 2011, my wife Kitty and I were fortunate enough to be able to purchase uh, the property we're standing on at the moment. I'd say for me, you know, one of the most rewarding, if not the most rewarding, um, has been able to share that with Fano. A lot of the challenges and issues that our Fano face in, in this uh, turbulent world, um, I believe, uh, due in some extent or form to an identity crisis. It is only when we are confident and comfortable with who we are and, and where we come from that we really have a strong enough base uh, and platform to do anything else in life. It's been awesome. The reactions of Fano from both sides of the Maunga, from Whakapara, from Whangaruru. Able to come up and reconnect with their Maunga in an environment where they feel comfortable. To always remember who we are and where we come from. Yeah. And to be proud of that.